Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today, I've got another classic Feynman integration video, uh, meaning all we do is, uh, well, we use the, the standard steps for uh, Feynman integration. And uh, if this is your first Feynman integration video, that's good because it'll, it'll give you a pretty good idea of how to do it. All right, so we have this integral right here that uh, is not going to be solvable using traditional techniques like um, U sub, integration by parts, trig sub, um, any, any of those things you learned in a standard, standard calculus test will not work on this integral. So this is what we're going to do. The first step is going to be familiar. We're going to invoke the integration by parts formula. We'll let u we'll let the we'll let our u equal natural log x, meaning that our du is one over x dx. We'll let our dv equal the rest, which is e to the negative x minus two e to the negative two x, and a dx. So that's our dv, which means our v is e to the negative x plus e to the negative. 2x. All right, so we plug that into our formula. So our integral right there is equal to u times v evaluated from 0 to infinity. That's right here, minus the integral of v du, which is right here. And the uh, the bounds will cancel out in this. You'll need to invoke, you'll need to use L'Hopital's rule on that because you can see we'll end up with a zero if we plug in infinity if we let x go to infinity we'll get a uh, a zero times infinity form which you can use L'Hopital's rule on also if you plug in zero you will again get a um a zero times infinity term allowing you to use L'Hopital's rule again okay and this integral um, just simplifies to this. So this part drops out, and this simplifies to this. So we have i is equal to this integral right now. Okay. So we still can't solve that integral using uh, standard techniques. So now we're going to have to use Feynman integration. So the first step we're going to do is define a function in terms of t equal to this integral right here. So all, all I did was added a t in front of that x right here. All right, and we'll note that if we plug in 2 for t, we'll get 0, because up here, or right here, we'll just end up with e to the negative 2x minus e to the negative 2x, which is 0. And if we plug in 1, we recover our original integral. This t becomes a 1, and we have what we need. All right, so the next step is we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, which says we can take the derivative... Oh, I'm sorry, I put an f1 of t. That, that's an f prime of t, uh, just so you know. Okay. Um, we know that f prime of t, using the Leibniz rule, is equal to this integral right here, except we just take the partial with respect to t of the integrand. And if you do that, this is, this is the integral you end up with. And that easily evaluates to negative 1 over t. All right, so um, going backwards now, because remember, we want our f of t, so we can plug in 1 to get the answer to our integral. So if we integrate f prime of t, which is negative 1 over t, we end up with negative natural log t plus a constant of integration. And we'll use this fact that f of 2 is equal to 0 to solve for that constant of integration right there. So we know f of 2 is equal to 0, which in turn is equal to natural log of 2 plus c. That means that c is equal to natural log 2. So now we have our final form of f of t. f of t is natural log 2 minus natural log t. So we just plug in... 1, and we have our answer. Of course, natural log 1 is 0, so at the answer will be uh, natural log 2. So we have i is equal to f of 1, which in turn is equal to the original integral that we wanted, which in turn is equal to natural log 2. So that integral evaluates to natural log 2. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.